Hi everyone, Mike here. There have been a few recent updates I wanted to go over, including some possible delays to the Starlink beta rollout. So first, the rollout so far. Elon Musk just tweeted that SpaceX has now shipped 100,000 Starlink terminals to users in 14 countries. 100,000 is quite a step up from the strategically notable number of 69,420 active users that he announced on Twitter and at the Mobile World Congress back at the end of June. Um, but, but it is operational. Um, we recently passed the strategically notable number of uh, 69,420 active uh, users. Um, and we are, I think, on our way to having a few hundred thousand uh, users uh, possibly. But jokes aside, that's an additional 30,000 users added in less than two months. The rate of growth is pretty astounding for a service that's still actively being developed. Demand for Starlink continues to outstrip that supply. Gwen Shotwell has also said that SpaceX has over 600,000 pre-orders for Starlink. At $99 US for each pre-order, that's a lot of money, around $60 million just in pre-order payments, pretty much the list price for a Falcon 9 launch. So all of this sounds pretty amazing for the beta. I mean, it's growing really fast, there's crazy demand, and really it's a pretty amazing service. But that demand seems to be causing some trouble. Gwen Shotwell also revealed at the 30 the 36th Space Symposium earlier in August, that they're facing delays on the user terminals due to the global supply of computer chips. We have two big issues right now. One are the chips, mm, yes. which I think everybody understands yeah. the issues. In fact, that's what's yeah. delayed um, some of the, the new user terminals that we're yeah. spending the design on. And the other thing is liquid oxygen. Yeah. We're actually gonna be impacted this year with the lack of liquid oxygen for yeah. launch. This chip shortage is affecting many industries, so this is no surprise. The way she worded it seems to suggest that it might actually only be impacting the new user terminal design, not the existing ones, but I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell. I'm actually surprised that they haven't been more affected, but I guess their quantities are still relatively low compared to many other industries. Another shortage I hadn't considered is in their supply of liquid oxygen, or LOX, but Gwen Shotwell called this out specifically along with the chip shortages. I don't know whether this is squarely due to the need for oxygen caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, but the shortage has the potential to delay upcoming launches. And speaking of delays, Viasat has been busy suing everyone to get the courts to block further Starlink launches, pending a judicial review of the FCC's decision on allowing SpaceX to modify the orbits of upcoming shells in its constellation. Now, every time SpaceX applies to modify, and they do it a lot with this iterative design, all the other satellite providers and anyone involved in the space raises all sorts of arguments against. Uh, Viasat seems to be taking this an extra step further, um, maybe taking a signal from Amazon and all their suing. Uh, thankfully, the DC Circuit Court of Appeals has denied uh, Viasat's motion, so SpaceX can continue launching for now. The appeal is still ongoing, however, uh, it was just the stay that was uh, that was denied, so it's still ongoing. And uh, I think I think a good thing is that it's been expedited, so that it should finish around the end of October. Hopefully, sensible heads will prevail in the decision. Before I continue, if you find these updates interesting, click the like button and subscribe down below. Hit the bell as well to get notified of my updates as soon as they come out. Okay, so no delay from the courts, right now anyway, but Gwen Shotwell also revealed at the Space Symposium that SpaceX is holding off further Starlink launches by themselves, you know, not being ordered to by a court. So they're holding off Starlink launches until all new satellites can be equipped with working laser links. 
We are um, building out a network. In fact, we've completed the first element of our network. We will have uh, 72 plane coverage, which basically gets us plus or minus 50 degrees, 53, 55 degrees. Um, and then we'll get to the poles later this year. We were hoping to do so a little bit sooner. Um, but we're working on our laser comm terminals. Um, so now, they already have some satellites in the constellation with the laser hardware. In the polar regions, the laser links are required to provide service, where the satellites in orbit won't be close enough to reach a ground station, where they can't deploy ground stations in the far north or far south. Or at least, they wouldn't have internet connectivity if they did. So when I heard they were delaying, my first thought was that it was bad news. I mean, if they have to delay to finish the laser links, it probably means that they're not actually working yet. You know, they haven't finalized the design, uh, the hardware design, so something that they can't just fix in software. Or potentially, maybe they're just waiting for parts due to that same chip shortage. But in her comments, Gwen Shotwell hinted that it could be as soon as three weeks from now. So maybe not too much of a delay if that holds true. But like I said, it's hard to know for sure at this point. I've seen some reports on the Starlink subreddit that lots of cells that have previously been open and accepting new orders are now all of a sudden being closed, uh, no capacity. There have also been reports of some areas, I think it was Virginia, that some regions are now reporting that they won't have service until 2023, kind of as an expected time frame. So that's a big push out from you know, mid to late 2021, which they were using in many regions. If you're still waiting for your order to convert, uh, let me know in the comments what your current estimate is. You know, if, if are you one of the ones who has been pushed out to 2023, or is yours kind of staying more consistent with the end of 2021, uh, 2022 kind of time frame? So all this together, it's really hard to say for sure at this point if this cell capacity limits has anything to do with the launch delays. I could understand if they want to slow down adding more users since they're slowing down on launches. Hopefully, we continue to see new beta users getting their kits. Uh, I've been seeing a few on the Starlink subreddit, particularly in Canada. So that's, that's good news that maybe they're reaching capacity because they're sending out new kits. But I think we need to kind of wait and see uh, how the rate changes while we're waiting for the next launches with the, um, with the laser hardware in the satellites. So we'll wait until the next launch and see how things change. I try to do a mix of updates like these um, along with my technical videos and general information on Starlink and other commercial space projects. If you like the formats, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoy it, and I really want to thank you very much for watching. See you next time.